Hi, everyone. It's Tuesday, September 19th. Uh, I pray you had a great Monday yesterday. Uh, we continue our focus uh, on this whole series, Winning on Purpose. Uh, pa Pastor Nathan talked about the heart and this relation we have with God through Jesus Christ. Uh, and and uh, this, this last Sunday and this week, we're focusing on relationship through Jesus with others. And, and so what do we put on and what do we take off to live in that relationship? That's, that's our focus. Um, and, and one of the things I mentioned in the message, uh, when I taught, when I teach uh, Foundations One, uh, um, it, I, one of the things I talk about is, is uh, in, in we we often say, uh, why does Saint Matthew exist? Saint Matthew exists uh, uh, because because uh, uh, you matter to God. We believe you matter to God, and this is talks about the heart, right? Uh, and 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 also uh, we believe you belong with us. That is part of the people of God. We want to do life with you. We want, to, we want to do life with you, right? <laughs> and finally, we believe you were made to make a difference. And that's what life abundantly is all about. That's what it means to win on purpose. That's what it means to have life to its full, uh, is to make a difference through relationship with those around us. And, and we really see this in our reading today. is from Colossians 3, and, and it goes like this. Uh, Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on things above where Christ is seated at the right hand of God. So here we are. You've been raised with Christ. You, you die with Christ. You've been raised with Christ, right? So now you're a brand new person. You have new life. As Jesus said, you're born again, right? Uh, and, so, and, 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 uh, and, and then he says, set your hearts on things above. Where Jesus, and what does it mean to the right hand of God? It means that he sits in the place of power. He rules all things for us. He is the good shepherd who lays down his life and picks it up again and who knows us. And he says, nothing can take you out of my hand. So, so this is... This is the foundation of everything, right? Uh, the heart relationship we have with God uh, through Jesus Christ. And it says here, set your minds on, thing, on things above, not on earthly things, for you died and your life is now hidden with Christ, right? You died and you were born again. That, that's what Jesus said. You have to be born again, right? Uh, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you also will appear with him in glory. And so this is pointing towards when Jesus comes, the culmination of all things, right? Uh, we'll be raised, so we'll have new, we'll have glorified bodies, uh, and we'll live with him face to face forever. That's what that's that's the culmination of everything. So so we we live in this reality with, with our heart with him, right? We we set our hearts on things above. We we treasure the things of God. We we don't treasure these things that really uh, are are just dead things that uh, that all the voices tell us will give us life uh, uh, to to its full, and and they'll all disappoint us, right? No, it's the things of God, relationship with him and through him with one another. But then it goes on. And, and, and it begins to talk about what we put off and what we put on uh, as those who follow Jesus Christ. And today we're, we're, we're going to look at uh, what, what we put off. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Yesterday in, in the message, I mentioned that sometimes my wife, Janie, she, she would say, uh, you, you're throwing that out. You're throwing that shirt out. I said, no, I like this shirt. He said, no, 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 it's done. It's done. It, it's, it, it's run its course. It's done. But I like, no, no, no. You, you can't wear that anymore, right? <laughs> That's what this is saying. Kill this. This is what you kill, right? Uh, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Now, what does that mean? And I alluded to it here a little bit, but um, yeah, we have this uh, human nature that has been corrupted by sin, right? And it's saying, hey, anything that belongs to that, you, you kill it. In, in another place in Romans, says you drown it, right? You drown the old Adam. You, it's, it's not many ways the Bible talks about this. Uh, Jesus said, as I mentioned, uh, right, we're born again. We have new life in him. So, so what belongs to that old nature, we, we drown. Now, this goes on here. It says, uh, there, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. And we immediately think, oh my gosh, here it is, banging me on the head. Uh, tell me what I can't do, right? What I can't do. And, and, I, and I think we missed the point here. The point here is that all of these things are really not who we are. See, we tend to identify ourselves and say, this is who we are. We're the ones who do sexual immorality. Whatever sexual immorality I engage in, that's kind of who I am. So you're asking me to give up a piece of myself. And God's saying, no, that's not true anymore. Because, because you're dead and you're a new person now. Yeah, your, your sinful nature is still corrupted by this thing, but it, it's not who you are anymore. And, and, and so with the rest of these, uh, uh, let me see, uh, 
sexual morality, impurity, lust, evil desires, greed, um, and all these things. You know, Jesus says, "Put your uh, set your heart on things above." We set our we are in, our old nature wants to set our hearts on everything else: greed and idolatry. Um, that's not who you are. We live in a time when we identify ourselves with this stuff. And we seem to think that like, like someone who's acting badly and, and, and they get called out and they say, well, that's just who I am. God would say to us, that's not who you are. You've been born again. Do you believe that? Do you know that? And so this is just symptoms of our, our, our sin corrupted uh, earthly nature. But it's not who we are. Uh, and, and, and we're empowered now because of who we are, Christ, to, to put it to death. The other thing that pops out of me, and I, I mentioned this last Sunday too, is that the, since the abundant life, uh, life, uh, the winning life, is all about relationship, notice here, these things aren't just stuff we don't do. They're all things that tie us into relationship on others, with others. If we engage in sexual morality, we, we've just uh, kind of put a barrier up between between half the population, right? If you're male or female, or maybe all the population, uh, depending on what kind of sexual armor you're engaging in, sexual immorality you're engaging in, it it destroys relationship. And same with the things with, with lust and, and greed and so forth. We put stuff before people. If life, the fullness of life, winning on purpose is about relationship, these things kill that. And, and they're not who we are because we're born anew. And so God is giving us this vision that no, this isn't who you are. This is symptoms of this, of sin infested human nature, but now you're brand new in me. And you can put these things to death. Um, it, it says here, but now you must rid yourselves of all such things as these, anger, rage, malice, slander, and filthy language from your lips. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices and have put on a new self, which is being renewed in knowledge in the image of its creator. Christ is all in all. That's what it says here. Christ is all in all. And, and so again, all of these things, we tend to think, oh, that's just who I am. I'm I'm, I'm uh, the angry one, right? I, th this is, I, I have a right to, to get angry and, and rage and, and, and engage in filthy language. It's kind of like, that's my identity, but it's not. It's a corruption of who we are. It's not who we are. A and because we are in Christ, because we're brand new, we can kill this stuff every day. Uh, and notice here, it's all about relationship again. Do not lie to each other. We live life together as God's people, and then we live life together with all of humankind. Uh, you know, this is, uh, th uh, these, this kind of idea is, Paul writes about again and again, and I just want to read you something from Ephesians. It says, surely you heard of him uh, and were taught in accordance with the truth that is in Christ Jesus. Here we go. You were taught with regard to your former way of life, right, to put off your old self which is being corrupted. There's that word, corrupted by its deceitful desires. It's not who you are. It's being corrupted by its deceitful desires. Uh, and, and you're a new person. To made new in the attitude of your minds and to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. We put on, we, I'm sorry, we take off the stuff of the sinful human nature because it's not who we are. It's not who we are. We are brand new in Christ, and we put on the stuff of the new nature, and that's what I'm going to talk about tomorrow. <laughs> By the way, uh, uh, one place uh, where Christians right from the beginning found to, to empower them to do this is, is in relationship with other Christians in small groups. We saw that in Acts. And so again, get online, call the office, do what you have to, but sign up for a Red Letter Challenge small group uh, and, and, and grow with us in following Jesus, in the life that we are meant to have, the abundant life. Win on purpose in this life. Take the step. Join a small group. W would you pray with me? Dearest Jesus, we thank you uh, that we're brand new in you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that you come, you empower us, and that you give us each other along this journey to, 
to, to walk beside each other, to help each other. We pray, Lord, that, um, that you might daily work in us the power to have the abundant life, to live in a relationship with you and through you in the relationship of love with those around us. We pray in your name. Amen. We'll see you tomorrow. May God be with you. Bye-bye.